Thank you all for coming to this conference. I know I get to speak to you all throughout the day, but I really hope everyone's having a fun time. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you for picking up on the cues. So when I uh, was uh, about two months ago, I was bothering all the speakers. I'm like, I need your talk titles. I need your talk titles. Where are your talk titles? I didn't know what I was going to talk about. So I'm going to say, OK, well, I was like, oh, I need an idea. Fun with R. Right, that's what came to mind. And then since then, I've been like, OK, how do I describe fun in R? Because for me, and I imagine for a lot of you, fun of R means just booting into R Studio and playing of R. Uh, if anyone remembers my talk from last year, I talked about R for everything, and I literally do everything in R. So it is a very fun process for me. But of course, not everyone here wants to spend 20 hours a day playing of R. I'm sure most of you do, right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I'm going to try to think of a few different specific ways. And I have a few different ways I'll go throughout the day that could be fun for some people, depending. I'm going to start with games. So there is a package called Fun. It was written by Yi Wei Ji. Who knows that name? Yeah. He wrote Knitter, and R Markdown, and Animation, and Sharingan, and I'm not even sure how many other ones. Book down, blog down. So without Yi Wei, a lot of what we do wouldn't be possible. So thank you, R Studio, for employing him. <laughs> So the first function in his package called fun that I'm going to talk to you about is Minesweeper. <laughs> you just call the function library, call the package fun, then call the function Minesweeper. It will build a Minesweeper game for you. Now, it doesn't work in the RStudio environment. <clears throat> <laughs> so you have to open up regular R GUI, you know, the, whatever comes with Windows or Mac and do it there, because it opens up in the graphics device. And you literally will left click to uncover tiles, right click to show bombs, uh, to mark bombs. And if you get the wrong one, as you can see in this graph, it'll blow up. So if you want to play Minesweeper, and for some reason you don't want to use the one built into Windows, you can do this. <laughs> also in the fun package is Go. So I don't think anyone from the AlphaGo team is here. But this is a two-player game in the graphics device in R, and you take turns placing black and white pieces. And you go back and forth until someone wins or loses. And this can go on and on, and you just keep doing it. The code for this, there's a lot of code that goes into the drawing of it, but the actual game logic is pretty short. This is the entire game logic, not to play Go, but to facilitate players of Go. And that's all it takes. It's a couple of repeat statements and a for loop. But no one here has to worry about that. You can just run Gomoku and play the game. One last function in the fun package is not so much a game as just a little cool toy, is Tower of Hanoi. You call Tower of Hanoi, and you say how many blocks you want. And it will sit there and take the blocks from one side and use the logical steps to move them around. And this GIF was generated using the animation package, also written by Yi Wei. Besides the code to draw the box, the logic code for this game is also pretty short. It's a recursive function that is just an, an if statement and an else, then calls itself repeatedly. So it's actually uh, it's pretty short and sweet. So other games not written by Yi Wei, I decided to show two of them. The first up is hangman. You can just use the package hangman and call the hangman function, and it'll generate a random word each time, complete with graphics to show you how your progress is. This was written by someone named Tyler Rinker. If you don't know that name, you might know his main package. He also wrote QDAP. Those of you who don't know, QDAP is one of the most premier, most premier is probably not a good saying, one of the premier packages for doing text analysis. It's a very big package that's out there. It's pretty heavyweight, and it does a lot. So you have this man to thank both for text analysis and Hangman. Now, thanks to Ramnaf, who is here, Ramnaf, we have the ability to integrate 
JavaScript into R using HTML widgets. So someone took the entanglement game and built an HTML widget for it. Now this is live in my presentation. I can sit here and manipulate it, but then I'll throw off my slides. But this, you could use your arrow keys and your enter key to play the entanglement game, all right inside of R. This works inside of R Studio, works inside of any R Markdown file. This was written by someone named Kent Russell, who you, more of you know him by, more of you know him as Timely Portfolio. You've probably seen him contribute to different uh, GitHub repos. He's also a, a lot of, uh, frequent on Twitter, so you've probably seen him a lot. So those are games you could play inside of R. But we can get out of R every now and then, and we can play other games. I know I'm sure a favorite game here is Sudoku. Who here plays Sudoku? Not as many as I suspected. OK. Well, Sudoku, you know, you could play it, you have to solve, everyone knows the concept though, right? Placing numbers. And it's fun to play. But I thought, what's more, what's more fun than playing Sudoku? Using R to solve Sudoku. To do this, we'll use the OMPR package. This is a package for optimization modeling for mixed integer programming. It's written by Dirk Schumacher. It was actually inspired by the jump library in Julia. This is an instance of the R community going to Julia and pulling back. There's a lot of uh, exchange of ideas between the two communities, so it's pretty nice. So the idea here is you start with a blank model, an MIP model, and then you add a variable x, which in this case is an array, i, j, k. You have your i row, your j column, and the k number. And it's binary. And you're saying that that k number is either in that cell or it is not in that cell. After that, we don't have an objective. We just set it to zero. And then we add constraints. These are the game rules. This is where you say a number has to appear exactly once in a cell. Only one number can appear. That's the first constraint. The next constraint is a number can only appear once per row. And then a number can only appear once per column. And a number can only appear once in a, the, nine, the, the square of nine cells. That's what each of these constraints are doing. These are just specifying the rules of the game. And this is a symbolic language. Those x's aren't real. This isn't like regular R where you can just type an x and see what it is. It's symbolic. So you actually have to be careful programming this. If you print out your model, it just tells you information about it. It, there are zero continuous variables, zero integer, but 729 binary variables. Because we have nine rows, nine columns, nine possible entries to get to 729. And we have 324 constraints. That's just based on the rules of the game of Sudoku. But when you start Sudoku, you have starting numbers, right? We have all these numbers. These numbers are more constraints. So we need to code these into the model. So we have 28 new constraints. And I just put two per line so it's easier to read all, fit in one slide. But the first one is saying that row one, column two, the number three is already there. Row one, column four, the number six is there. So forth and so on until you get to row nine, column eight for the number two. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it takes a long time to code this. It might actually be faster to play the game. <laughs> but why would you want to? So we look at this. We do see for the constraints, we have 28 new constraints because of all the initial conditions. So we did all that with the OMPR, pot, the OMPR package. Now it's time to solve it. So for this, we need to load in the OMPR.ROI package and the roi.plugin.glpk package. And it's one line of code after that. It's solve model. You tell it the model you want to solve, and then you tell it which solver to use. And it prints out these messages, tells you how you're doing, it goes through the iterations, and eventually it gets a solution. And I say eventually, it, it converged in less than a second. So at least for Sudoku, it's fast. And if you print out the result, it tells you you're optimal which is great, because you, you got to a solution. But OK, I want to see my solution. So you use a little bit of dplyr. Uh, you, get the, you use get solution to extract it. And then you filter. It shows you where numbers are and where numbers are not. 
So you just get rid of the ones that are zero, has to be greater than zero, and you select i, j, k. This is in long format, so it's not tidy. So just a little bit of a tidy R code, and you can make it wide, and you get your solution. Right? Nice and easy, and yes, I tested this on an actual game. I got a game, I plugged in every the numbers, and I solved it, and it was a, it was a solution. So it's awesome. <laughs> so that's a game you can play. Now, I know a lot of you have fun other ways, perhaps reading XKCD. And I'm sure we all know about the RxKCD package, right? If you ever need to read XKCD and you can't open up a browser, <laughs> just use get XKCD and give it, the, give it the number, and you'll get an XKCD comic. Now, we all wish we could draw graphs just like Randall draws, right? And for years, there has been a package called XKCD, but there's a new package called Comic R. So we're going to start with a regular plot, just a scatter plot of the first 10 integers. And type B gives you a dot with the dashes connecting it, and BTYL gives you an L-shaped border. And that's just a basic plot. Yeah, it's not even ggplot, not that exciting. But if we use HTML tools, SVG annotation, XML, and Comic R, you can build up this pseudo HTML code where you have a div. In there, you're putting HTML code, which is just wrapped around XML, which is wrapped around SVG of this plot. But at the very bottom, you put that comic R tag and give it an ID so you know how to access it. And just by doing this, you get a beautiful hand-drawn plot. <laughs> this was also written by Timely Portfolio. So, other ways we can have fun still. For some of us, that's sports. Particularly the NFL, they have a great API. It looks like this. It's a play-by-play. -play. Every single play in every single game, they have as a text description. And you have to parse that text and get all the information out of there. But I gave a talk recently at a sports conference, and someone, the head of IT from the NFL was in the talk. And someone told me, said afterwards, that information's public. We had to cut that off. <laughs> uh, like, why? Anyway, luckily, someone named Brian Povlinski made a nice Excel spreadsheet that you could just read in using Read Excel that has it all parsed already. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the most prolific passers. And there's an example I saw from Decision Stats, I believe. I'll get you the exact name. And you take the most frequent passers and look how they're doing for short and long passes, left, middle, and right. A little bit of dplyr code. You throw this into ggplot, and you get this beautiful graph by Decisions and R. They're the ones I saw this from. And it easily shows that most of these quarterbacks even the great Eli Manning, do best at short passes. With the exception of Kirk Cousins, he's great at over the middle deep balls. I don't know why, but someone could explain that. You get a nice quick visualization. And this is only the top 10 quarterbacks. I tried doing all the quarterbacks and using Trelloscope JS. Uh, Ryan Haven presented, presented at the meetup uh, last month. Unfortunately, it didn't integrate well with uh, self-contained R markdown files. I wanted my file to be self-contained, but with Telescope JS, you can just sort of swipe through thousands of images. It's really cool. For those of you who like basketball, of course we could play at that. Todd Schneider, who spoke at the meetup sometime in the past year, made this beautiful graph as a shiny app. And he's happened to showing Curry. Where does Curry take his shots from? all from beyond the three-point line. And look how beautiful this graph looks. This is an R-generated graph, which I think just looks stunning. I'm not going to show the code here because it's a lot of code, because it's an entire Shiny app, but it's really, really cool. And of course, you could do this with hockey as well, but there's only so much time we have. So another thing that I consider fun, but I'm not sure everyone else here does, building web pages. Not really, right? But I find it fun if you could build it using R. So, uh, we used to post all the presentations for the meetup on meetup.com. But a few months ago, they cut off that capability. We can no longer post slideshows. 
So I did the natural thing and built an entire website for the meetup. It is live today at nyhackr.org. And you can see right up here, this is a couple of JavaScript widgets using Crosstalk, a uh, new package, fairly new package that came out of the RStudio team, to make an interactive website that doesn't depend on Shiny. It's a static HTML and JavaScript file built completely with our markdown. If you go to myhackr.org, you'll see this. And this shows you a listing. You want to search by topic, it'll show you all the talks, talks for a certain topic. It'll pull up any slideshow we have available, and it'll have a link to any video we have available. In there, you'll also find information about the meetup. You'll find a Twitter feed. You'll find books written by people who are from the meetup. You'll find lists about our sponsors. And you'll even find our pizza poll once we get the last bit of JavaScript working. The code for this, and I will make the code available. If anyone wants to contribute and make it look prettier, I'll absolutely take pull requests. It uses crosstalk, uses the shared data, to data frames from crosstalk. And I had to build a custom filter. There's filters that are built into crosstalk. They didn't do what I needed, so I had to build a custom one. But it's fairly simple. I made a custom data table function. And I uh, put it all together. And now it's a nice, really fully functioning website. It looks really cool. Now, another big thing I love about this community is that we communicate with each other. So to further facilitate that, starting tomorrow, there will be an NYHackR Slack channel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to go to nyhackr.slack.com, you, you have to put a request on the website for invitation. Everyone will get an invite. Whoever asks will get one. It'll be a whole community. And you can already see I created channels. Oh, I didn't take the new screenshot. There's an R help channel. There's even a Python and Julia help channel. There's a GitHub help channel. There's events. There's general. Whatever you want to do, go in there and just sort of hang out and chat. So starting tomorrow, uh, the registration for that will be live and just make it a great, vibrant place for everyone to hang out and chat and just in, enjoy being part of the community. But in case talking on Slack really isn't enough, there is a package called Slack R, which will let you interact with Slack through R. Highly recommend doing that. And. In case anyone wants to work on a group project together, I've created a GitHub team for NYHackR. It is a publicly available team. Anyone can host team projects on there and collaborate together, all using the NYHackR Git repo page. I'm not even sure if you need to sign up. Just go ahead and join. If you need to send a request, I'll confirm anybody. This just went live again today also. So if anyone wants to join in, go at it. And again, in case you don't want to leave R, there is a package called git to R. And of course, we have awesome t-shirts. Everyone got their free t-shirt today? Nice. Hopefully everyone comes wearing that tomorrow. It's a really fun t-shirt. We also have IR New York. We also have NYC Data Mafia. But the biggest part about this as a community is that we actually are a community. This photo was taken last year at the conference, but you'll see a similar scene play out every single month at the meetup. Yeah, some of you can find yourselves there, right? I, I, I see Joe right there in the front. Yeah, your friend's there. Harry's there. So this is what makes a group so awesome. It's one of the more social groups I've ever seen at any meetup at any topic. People come out to the bar. They come and hang out. So this is what I love so much about this group, that we all actually get together in person and hang out and do things. So thank you, everyone in the crew, for being such a good community. Round of applause for yourselves. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>